Feng Shui Chinese, Feng Shui pronounced F -way listen, also known as Chinese geomancy, is pseudoscience originating from ancient China, which claims to use energy forces to harmonize individuals with the surrounding environment. The term Feng Shui literally translates as wind water in English. This is a cultural shorthand taken from the passage of the now lost Book of Burial recorded in Guo Pu's commentary. Feng Shui is one of the five arts of Chinese metaphysics, classified as physiognomy observation of appearances through formulas and calculations. The Feng Shui practice discusses architecture in terms of invisible forces that bind the universe, earth, and humanity together, known as qi. Historically, Feng Shui was widely used to orient buildings, often spiritually significant structures such as tombs, but also dwellings and other structures, in an auspicious manner. Depending on the particular style of feng shui being used, an auspicious site could be determined by reference to local features such as bodies of water, or stars or the compass. Topic. History Topic. Origins As of 2013 the Yangshao and Hongshan cultures provide the earliest known evidence for the use of feng shui. Until the invention of the magnetic compass, feng shui apparently relied on astronomy to find correlations between humans and the universe. In 4000 BC, the doors of Banpo dwellings aligned with the asterism Yingxi just after the winter solstice. This cited the homes for solar gain. During the Zhou era, Yingxi was known as Ding and used to indicate the appropriate time to build a capital city, according to the Xi Jing. The late Yangshao site at Dadawan c. BC includes a palace-like building F901 at the center. The building faces south and borders a large plaza. It stands on a north-south axis with another building that apparently housed communal activities. Regional communities may have used the complex, a grave at Puyang around 4000 BC that contains mosaics, actually a Chinese star map of the dragon and tiger asterisms and bidu the big dipper, ladle or bushel, is oriented along a north-south axis. The presence of both round and square shapes in the Puyang tomb, at Hongshan ceremonial centers and at the late Longshan settlement at Lutaigang, Suggests that Gaetian cosmography heaven round, earth square, existed in Chinese society long before it appeared in the Zhou Bi Xuanjing. Cosmography that bears a striking resemblance to modern feng shui devices and formulas appears on a piece of jade unearthed at Hanshan and dated around 3000 BC. Archaeologist Li Zuchen links the design to the Liuran astrolabe, Jinan Zhen, and Luopan, beginning with palatial structures at early to. All capital cities of China followed rules of feng shui for their design and layout. During the Zhou era, the Kaogongji simplified Chinese, Kaogongji traditional Chinese, Kaogongji manual of crafts codified these rules. The carpenter's manual Lu Banjing simplified Chinese, Lu Banjing traditional Chinese, Lu Banjing Lu Ban's manuscript codified rules for builders. Graves and tombs also followed rules of feng shui from Puyang to Mawangdui and beyond. From the earliest records, the structures of the graves and dwellings seem to have followed the same rules. Topic. Early instruments and techniques The history of feng shui covers 3,500 plus years before the invention of the magnetic compass. It originated in Chinese astronomy. Some current techniques can be traced to Neolithic China, while others were added later most notably the Han Dynasty, the Tang, the Song, and the Ming. The astronomical history of feng shui is evident in the development of instruments and techniques. According to the Zhuli, the original feng shui instrument may have been a gnomon. Chinese used circumpolar stars to determine the north-south axis of settlements. This technique explains why Shang palaces at Shaotun lie 10 degrees east of due north. In some of the cases, as Paul Wheatley observed, they bisected the angle between the directions of the rising and setting sun to find north. This technique provided the more precise alignments of the Shang walls at Yanqi and Zhengzhou. Rituals for using a feng shui instrument required a diviner to examine current sky phenomena to set the device and adjust the position in relation to the device. The oldest examples of instruments used for feng shui are liuran and astrolabes, also known as shi. These consist of a lacquered, two-sided board with astronomical sightlines. 
The earliest examples of Lyra and astrolabes have been unearthed from tombs that date between 278 BC and 209 BC. Along with divination for Da Lu Ren the boards were commonly used to chart the motion of Taiyi through the Nine Palaces. The markings on a Lyra and Xi and the first magnetic compasses are virtually identical. The magnetic compass was invented for feng shui and has been in use since its invention. Traditional feng shui instrumentation consists of the luo pan or the earlier south pointing spoon ji nan zhen, ji nan zhen, though a conventional compass could suffice if one understood the differences. A feng shui ruler a later invention may also be employed. <laughs> <laughs> Foundational concepts Topic. Definition and classification The goal of feng shui as practiced today is to situate the human-built environment on spots with good qi, an imagined form of energy. The perfect spot is a location and an axis in time. Feng shui is not a science, and is classified as a pseudoscience since it exhibits a number of classic pseudoscientific aspects such as making claims about the functioning of the world which are not amenable to testing with the scientific method. Topic. Qi 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 pronounced Qi in English, is a movable positive or negative life force which plays an essential role in feng shui. The Book of Burial says that burial takes advantage of vital qi. Wu Yuanyin, Qing Dynasty, said that vital qi was congealed qi, which is the state of qi that engenders life. The goal of feng shui is to take advantage of vital qi by appropriate sighting of graves and structures. Some people destroyed graveyards of their enemies to weaken their qi. Topic. Polarity Polarity is expressed in feng shui as yin and yang theory. Polarity expressed through yin and yang is similar to a magnetic dipole. That is, it is of two parts, one creating an exertion and one receiving the exertion. Yang acting and yin receiving could be considered an early understanding of chirality. The development of this theory and its corollary, five-phase theory, five-element theory, have also been linked with astronomical observations of sunspots, the five elements or forces Wu Zing, which, according to the Chinese, are metal, earth, fire, water, and wood, are first mentioned in Chinese literature in a chapter of the classic book of history. They play a very important part in Chinese thought, elements meaning generally not so much the actual substances as the forces essential to human life. Earth is a buffer, or an equilibrium achieved when the polarities cancel each other. While the goal of Chinese medicine is to balance yin and yang in the body, the goal of feng shui has been described as aligning a city, site, building, or object with yin-yang force fields. Topic. Bagua eight trigrams. Eight diagrams known as Bagua or Pa Kua loom large in feng shui, and both predate their mentions in the Yijing or I Ching. The Lo River chart Luoshu was developed first, and is sometimes associated with later heaven arrangement of the Bagua. This and the Yellow River chart Hetu, sometimes associated with the earlier heaven Bagua are linked to astronomical events of the 6th millennium BC, and with the turtle calendar from the time of Yao. The turtle calendar of Yao, found in the Yaodian section of the Shangshu or Book of Documents, dates to 2300 BC, plus or minus 250 years. In Yaodian, the cardinal directions are determined by the marker stars of the mega constellations known as the four celestial animals. East, the azure dragon, spring equinox. Niao, bird Niao, Alpha Scorpionis. South, the vermilion bird, summer solstice. Huo, fire Huo, Alpha Hydri. West, the white tiger, autumn equinox. Mao, hair moro, eta tauri, the Pleiades. North, the black tortoise, winter solstice. Zoo, emptiness, void zoo, alpha aquari, beta aquari. Diagrams are also linked with the Safang four directions method of divination used during the Shang dynasty. The Safang is much older, however, it was used at Niaheliang and figured large in Hongshan culture's astronomy. And it is this area of China that is linked to Yellow Emperor, Huangdi, who allegedly invented the South Pointing Spoon, Sea Compass. Topic. 
Traditional feng shui Traditional feng shui is an ancient system based upon the observation of heavenly time and earthly space. The literature of ancient China, as well as archaeological evidence, provides some idea of the origins and nature of the original feng shui techniques. Topic. Form branch The form branch is the oldest branch of feng shui. King Wuzi in the Han Dynasty describes it in the Book of the Tomb, 1, and Guo Pu of the Jin Dynasty follows up with a more complete description in the Book of Burial. The form branch was originally concerned with the location and orientation of tombs, Yin House Feng Shui, which was of great importance. The branch then progressed to the consideration of homes and other buildings, Yang House Feng Shui. The form in form branch refers to the shape of the environment, such as mountains, rivers, plateaus, buildings, and general surroundings. It considers the five celestial animals phoenix, green dragon, white tiger, black turtle, and the yellow snake, the yin-yang concept and the traditional five elements wu zing, wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. The form branch analyzes the shape of the land and flow of the wind and water to find a place with ideal qi. It also considers the time of important events such as the birth of the resident and the building of the structure. Topic. Compass branch The compass branch is a collection of more recent feng shui techniques based on the eight cardinal directions, each of which is said to have unique qi. It uses the Luopan, a disc marked with formulas in concentric rings around a magnetic compass. The compass branch includes techniques such as flying star and eight mansions. Topic: Transmission of traditional feng shui techniques. Aside from the books written throughout history by feng shui masters and students, there is also a strong oral history. In many cases, masters have passed on their techniques only to selected students or relatives. Topic. Current usage of traditional branches There is no contemporary agreement that one of the traditional branches is most correct. Therefore, modern practitioners of feng shui generally draw from multiple branches in their own practices. Topic. Western forms of feng shui More recent forms of feng shui simplify principles that come from the traditional branches, and focus mainly on the use of the bagua. Topic. Aspirations method The Eight Life Aspirations style of feng shui is a simple system which coordinates each of the eight cardinal directions with a specific life aspiration or station such as family, wealth, fame, etc., which come from the Bagua government of the Eight Aspirations. Life Aspirations is not otherwise a geomantic system. Topic. List of specific feng shui branches Topic. Ti Li form branch. Topic. Popular Zingshi Pai, Zingshi forms, methods. Luan Tu Pai, Luan Tu Pai Pinyin, Luan Tu Pai, environmental analysis without using a compass. Xingxiang Pai, Xingxiang Pai or Xingxiang Pai, Pinyin, Xingxiang Pai, Imaging Forms Xingfa Pai, Xingfa Pai Pinyin, Xingfa Pai Topic. Liechi Pai Compass Branch 
Topic popular Liechi Pi Liechi Pi Compass Method San Yuan Method San Yuan Pi Pinion San Yuan Pi Dragon Gate Eight Formation Long Men Ba Fa Pinion Long Men Ba Fa Xuan Kong Zuan Kong Time and Space Methods Xuan Kong Fei Zing Zuan Kong Fei Zing Flying Stars Methods of Time and Directions Xuan Kong Da Gua Zuan Kong Da Gua Secret Decree or 64 Gua Relationships Xuan Kong Mi Zi Zuan Kong Mi Zi Mysterious Space Secret Decree Xuan Kong Lu Fa, Zuan Kong Lu Fa Mysterious Space 6 Techniques, Zi Bai Ju, Zi Bo Ju A Purple White Scroll, San He Method, San He Pai Environmental Analysis Using a Compass, Accessing Dragon Methods Ba Zhai, Ba Zhai 8 Mansions, Yang Gong Feng Shui, Yang Gong Feng Shui Water Methods, He Luo Shui Fa Local Embrace Others Yin House Feng Shui, Yin Zhui Feng Shui Feng Shui for the Deceased, Four Pillars of Destiny, Si Zhu Ming Li A Form of Hemorology, Zi Wei Dao Shu, Zi Wei Dao Shu Purple Purple Star Astrology, I Ching, Yi Jing Book of Changes, Qi Men Dun Jia, Qi Men Dun Jia Mysterious Door Escaping Techniques, Da Lu Ren, Da Lu Rain Divination, Big Six Heavenly Yang Water Qi, Tai Yi Shen Shu, Tai Yi Shen Shu Divination, Tai Yi Magical Calculation Method, Date Selection, Zai Ri Selection of Auspicious Dates and Times for Important Events, Chinese Palmistry, Zhang Xiang Shui Destiny Reading by Palm Reading, Chinese Face Reading, Mian Xiang Shui Destiny Reading by Face Reading, Major and Minor Wandering Stars, Constellations, Five Phases, Wu Zing Relationship of the Five Phases or Wuxing, BTB Black, Hat, Tantric Buddhist Sect, Westernized or Modern Methods Not Based on Classical Teachings, Symbolic Feng Shui, New Age Feng Shui Methods that Advocate Substitution with Symbolic, Spiritual, Appropriate Representation of Five Elements, Objects if Natural Environment or Object, S is, are not available or viable, Pierce Method of Feng Shui, Sometimes Pronounced, Von Shui, The Practice of Melding Striking with Soothing Furniture arrangements to promote peace and prosperity. Topic. Contemporary uses of traditional feng shui Landscape ecologists often find traditional feng shui an interesting study. In many cases, the only remaining patches of old forest in Asia are feng shui woods associated with cultural heritage, historical continuity, and the preservation of various flora and fauna species. Some researchers interpret the presence of these woods as indicators that the healthy homes, sustainability and environmental components of ancient feng shui should not be easily dismissed. Environmental scientists and landscape architects have researched traditional feng shui and its methodologies. Architects study feng shui as an ancient and uniquely Asian architectural tradition. Geographers have analyzed the techniques and methods to help locate historical sites in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada, and archaeological sites in the American Southwest, concluding that ancient Native Americans also considered astronomy and landscape features. Topic. Criticisms Topic. Traditional feng shui Traditional feng shui relies upon the compass to give accurate readings. However, critics point out that the compass degrees are often inaccurate as fluctuations caused by solar winds have the ability to greatly disturb the electromagnetic field of the Earth. Determining a property or site location based upon magnetic north will result in inaccuracies because true magnetic north fluctuates. Matteo Ricci, 1552-1610, one of the founding fathers of Jesuit China missions, may have been the first European to write about feng shui practices. His account in De Christiana Expedition Apid Sinas tells about feng shui masters geology, in Latin, studying prospective construction sites or grave sites with reference to the head and the tail and the feet of the particular dragons which are supposed to dwell beneath that spot." As a Catholic missionary, Ritchie strongly criticized the «recondite science» of geomancy along with astrology as yet another superstitio absurdissima of the heathens. What could be more absurd than their imagining that the safety of a family, honors, and their entire existence must depend upon such trifles as a door being opened from one side or another, as rain falling into a courtyard from the right or from the left, a window opened here or there, or one roof being higher than another. Victorian era commentators on feng shui were generally ethnocentric, and as such skeptical and derogatory of what they knew of feng shui. 
In 1896, at a meeting of the Educational Association of China, Rev. P. W. Pitcher railed at the rottenness of the whole scheme of Chinese architecture and urged fellow missionaries to erect unabashedly Western edifices of several stories and with towering spires in order to destroy nonsense about feng shui. After the founding of the People's Republic of China in 1949, feng shui was officially considered a feudalistic superstitious practice and a social evil, according to the state's ideology and was discouraged and even banned outright at times. Feng Shui remained popular in Hong Kong, and also in the Republic of China Taiwan, where traditional culture was not suppressed. Persecution was the most severe during the Cultural Revolution, when Feng Shui was classified as a custom under the so-called Thorolds to be wiped out. Feng Shui practitioners were beaten and abused by Red Guards and their works burned. After the death of Mao Zedong and the end of the Cultural Revolution, the official attitude became more tolerant but restrictions on feng shui practice are still in place in today's China. It is illegal in the PRC today to register feng shui consultation as a business and similarly advertising feng shui practice is banned. There have been frequent crackdowns on feng shui practitioners on the grounds of promoting feudalistic superstitions such as one in Qingdao in early 2006 when the city's business and industrial administration office shut down an art gallery converted into a feng shui practice. Some communist officials who had previously consulted feng shui were terminated and expelled from the Communist Party, partly because of the Cultural Revolution. In today's mainland China less than one-third of the population believe in feng shui, and the proportion of believers among young urban Chinese is said to be much lower learning feng shui is still somewhat considered taboo in today's China. Nevertheless, it is reported that feng shui has gained adherence among Communist Party officials according to a BBC Chinese news commentary in 2006, and since the beginning of Chinese economic reforms the number of feng shui practitioners is increasing. A number of Chinese academics permitted to research on the subject of feng shui are anthropologists or architects by profession, studying the history of feng shui or historical feng shui theories behind the design of heritage buildings, such as Cao Dafeng, the vice president of Fudan University, and Lu Shenghuan of Tongji University. Topic. Contemporary feng shui Westerners were criticized at the start of the anti-Western Boxer Rebellion for violating the basic principles of feng shui in the construction of railroads and other conspicuous public structures throughout China. However, today, feng shui is practiced not only by the Chinese, but also by Westerners and still criticized by Christians around the world. Many modern Christians have an opinion of feng shui similar to that of their predecessors, it is entirely inconsistent with Christianity to believe that harmony and balance result from the manipulation and channeling of non-physical forces or energies, or that such can be done by means of the proper placement of physical objects. Such techniques, in fact, belong to the world of sorcery. Still others are simply skeptical of feng shui. Evidence for its effectiveness is based primarily upon anecdote and users are often offered conflicting advice from different practitioners. Feng Shui practitioners use these differences as evidence of variations in practice or different branches of thought. Critical analysts have described it thus. Feng Shui has always been based upon mere guesswork. Some are skeptical of Feng Shui's lasting impact. Mark Johnson This present state of affairs is ludicrous and confusing. Do we really believe that mirrors and flutes are going to change people's tendencies in any lasting and meaningful way? There is a lot of investigation that needs to be done or we will all go down the tubes because of our inability to match our exaggerated claims with lasting changes. Nonetheless, after Richard Nixon journeyed to the People's Republic of China in 1972, feng shui became marketable in the United States and has since been reinvented by New Age entrepreneurs for Western consumption. Critics of contemporary feng shui are concerned that with the passage of time much of the theory behind it has been lost in translation, not paid proper consideration, frowned upon, or even scorned. Robert T. Carroll sums up what feng shui has become in some instances. Feng shui has become an aspect of interior decorating in the Western world and alleged masters of feng shui now hire themselves out for hefty sums to tell people such as Donald Trump which way his doors and other things should hang. Feng Shui has also become another new age energy scam with arrays of metaphysical products. 
Offered for sale to help you improve your health, maximize your potential, and guarantee fulfillment of some fortune cookie philosophy. Others have noted how, when feng shui is not applied properly, it can even harm the environment, such as was the case of people planting lucky bamboo in ecosystems that could not handle them. Feng shui practitioners in China find superstitious and corrupt officials easy prey, despite official disapproval. In one instance, in 2009, county officials in Gansu, on the advice of feng shui practitioners, spent $732,000 to haul a 369-ton spirit rock to the county seat to ward off bad luck. The stage magician duo Penn and Teller dedicated an episode of their bullshit television show to criticize the construal of contemporary practice of feng shui in the Western world as science. In this episode, they devised a test in which the same dwelling was visited by five different feng shui consultants, all five producing different opinions about said dwelling, by which means it was attempted to show there is no consistency in the professional practice of feng shui. Topic. Contemporary practice Many Asians, especially people of Chinese descent, believe it is important to live a prosperous and healthy life as evident by the popularity of Fu Lu Shou in the Chinese communities. Many of the higher level forms of feng shui are not easily practiced without having connections in the community or a certain amount of wealth because hiring an expert, altering architecture or design, and moving from place to place requires a significant financial outlay. This leads some people of the lower classes to lose faith in feng shui, saying that it is only a game for the wealthy. Others, however, practice less expensive forms of feng shui, including hanging special but cheap mirrors, forks, or woks in doorways to deflect negative energy. In recent years, a new brand of easier to implement DIY feng shui known as symbolic feng shui, which is popularized by best-selling author Lillian Tu, is being practiced by feng shui enthusiasts. It entails placements of auspicious and preferably aesthetically pleasing five-element objects, such as money god and tortoise, at various locations of the house so as to achieve a pleasing and substitute alternative productive cycle environment if a good natural environment is not already present or is too expensive to build and implement. Feng shui is so important to some strong believers, that they use it for healing purposes although there is no empirical evidence that this practice is in any way effective in addition to guide their businesses and create a peaceful atmosphere in their homes, in particular in the bedroom where a number of techniques involving colors and arrangement are used to achieve enhanced comfort and more peaceful sleep. In 2005, even Disney acknowledged feng shui as an important part of Chinese culture by shifting the main gate to Hong Kong Disneyland by 12 degrees in their building plans, among many other actions suggested by the master planner of architecture and design at Walt Disney Imagineering, Wing Chow, in an effort to incorporate local culture into the theme park. At Singapore Polytechnic and other institutions, many working professionals from various disciplines, including engineers, architects, property agents, and interior designers, take courses on feng shui and divination every year with a number of them becoming part-time or full-time feng shui or geomancy consultants eventually. <laughs> See also